So originally we were supposed to discuss a game picked out by Ryan, but since the release of this video was so close to Halloween, we decided to delve into my world of horror games once again. Soma begins like so many other horror games do. You wake up by the sound of your phone going off. Christ. <laughs> Yeah, I'm up. Hi, Simon Jarrett? Yeah, that's me. My name is David Munchie. We spoke earlier. The brain scan. I remember. In the intro cutscene, we get to see a glimpse of the main character, Simon, and it is revealed that he suffers from major brain damage caused by an accident, and that he needs special treatments to get cured. Before you go to your doctor's appointment to get treated, you have the freedom to explore your own apartment, check your email, listen to messages on your voicemail, and make a complete mess by throwing everything around. Ooh, that looks expensive. It's probably the worst nightmare for any cameraman or woman out there. Mm -hmm. There we go. Took a trash can and put it in a toilet and started to make a little collection in there. Oh man, this is the game for me right now. This is all I'm doing. <laughs> this is our let's play. Ryan throws shit in the toilet. Uh, from there, you go to a doctor's office and you look out one of the windows and you realize you're in Canada. Uh, from there, you find your first puzzle in the game where you have to find a code to unlock the door. And once the door is unlocked, you meet the doctor, he plugs you into a machine. When you take the device off your head again, you notice that you are in a completely different place. You wake up in what looks to be a submarine. Through audio logs that are spread around, you find out that not only are you in a completely different place, but also many years into the future. From there, you kind of wander around, you see some dead robot looking things. And you start to notice a black organic goo that is all over the place. In some rooms, it is even so bad as that the goo has covered entire walls with big bulking buds that have tumor-shaped blue growths attached to them and tentacle-shaped cables coming out of them as well. The whole look of this growth is very reminiscent of an H.R. Geiger style. In a certain room, there's a robot lying on the floor and is clearly dying. Two cables are attached to a wall and in order to access a control panel to get out of the room, the player is forced to detach the cables, meaning that the robot will die. As you do this, the robot begs you to let her live, and I felt a bit sorry as I ripped out her life support. What happens if I pull it off? Don't. Ryan, on the other hand. Fuck you, bitch. I need it. Why? I was okay. I was okay. Shortly afterward, you have your first encounter with an enemy. It is a big robot that patrols the halls and is fairly easy to avoid. Oh dear. Oh my. What I have dubbed Turkatron, he kind of is pissed off all the time and follows you around and is looking to kill you. The red pipes, I need to follow the red pipes. Oh shit! Uh oh. Uh oh. The jump! I'm fucking screwed. Ow! It's not really scary, but the good thing about it is that it's introduced to the player first to get his or her guard down. Whereas the enemies that you will face after that are way more menacing. Jesus! Then at a certain point you have a conversation with a robot and this robot clearly thinks it is human. He tries to convince you that he's actually a person and obviously you're sitting there looking at a dying robot, he's telling you he's a people and he's clearly not. Are you human? Shit, did, did my body give it away? I try hard to save a mystery. Yeah, I'm human. Are you? The logical thing for the player to think then at that point is that the main character, Simon, is a robot as well. Shortly after that, 
this indeed gets revealed. Then finally, you manage to establish contact with someone else. A scientist named Catherine, who is part of the crew at the facility that you are in right now, she reveals that it's actually the 22nd century and that a meteor has struck the Earth, making living on the surface impossible. The only humans that are left are the handful of scientists that are posted in the underwater facility. Have you seen any people, like staff or field technicians? Only robots, crazy ones. Except for one. I think he said his name was Carl. He was okay, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I accidentally killed him by turning off the power. Oh. Well, you know, robots don't feel anything, so... Yeah. I know it's a lot to take in, and it becomes even more complex after that. When you finally meet Catherine, she is, to no surprise, also a robot. There you are, upright and everything. No, not you too. I was really hoping you were human. Don't let the circuitry fool you, I was human once. She was human before, but she made a digital copy of her brain, meaning that she could transfer her personality into other beings, albeit a robot. The same process also makes an appearance in the movie Chappie. Catherine tells you of a project she's been working on called The Ark. The Ark is a digital world that she wants to populate with digital versions of real people in order to save what's left from humanity. My project? Oh, well, I saved all the people on the station as brain scans and put them into an artificial world. We were going to launch it into space to save it from, uh, well, all of this. Are you telling me that you were going to launch a computer world filled with people into space? Yes. It was just a pet project at first, but it got really serious after the comet took out the surface. Then suddenly it became very important and it was officially named the Ark. Along your adventure, it is slowly revealed why the facility is deserted and why everyone is dead. You see, when a brain scan is performed and a digital version of you is created, the real you still exists afterwards. This means that there are two versions of you, the real you and the digital you. Many of the scientists chose to kill themselves so that only one version of them, the digital one, would live on forever. The game deals with some interesting moral choices as well. At a certain point, you need a specific chip that can only be found in robots. In order to get this chip, you need to kill one of two robots that have helped you before. Come on, I don't want to hurt anyone. Isn't this a bit much? It's just a robot, Simon. We're just robots, sort of. One of them is a cute, small-looking robot that has no AI attached to it, but it has helped you before by moving away rubble or opening doors. The other robot is not as cute-looking, However, it actually has a voice and conscience. So which robot do you kill? These kind of choices happen more throughout the game, and it truly brings up an interesting philosophical subject. It is a subject that has been explored in many forms of media, namely, what it is to be, and if robots can actually be as well, even though they don't have the same vitals as we humans do. I just can't stop thinking about what we've become. It's clear that we're no longer human, but then how can I feel like Simon? How can I feel like anything at all? Playing this game really made me want to watch the movie Ghost in the Shell again. The ending of the game is really powerful and sad. You finally manage to get the Ark up and running, and the plan is to shoot it into outer space since the Earth is uninhabitable. Right before the Ark gets launched, both Catherine and Simon perform another brain scan to get a copy of themselves on the digital world of Ark. Yeah, we made it! <laughs> The sad truth is that Simon expected to be transferred into his new body, but as mentioned before, it is merely a copy. Then why are we still here? Simon, I can't keep telling you how it works. You won't listen. You know why we're here. You were copied onto the Ark. You just didn't carry over. You lost the coin toss. We both did. Just like Simon and Omar Khan, just like the man who died in Toronto a hundred years ago. So Simon sits there alone and sad as he realizes that he can do nothing else but to either kill himself or live out the rest of his robotic life alone on the ocean. This is bullshit. We came all this way. We launched the Ark. I know it sucks, but our copies are up there. Catherine and Simon are both safe on the Ark. Be happy for them. Are you crazy? We're gonna die down here with those fuckers living at large on a spaceship. They're not us. 
They're not us! Catherine, on the other hand, is happy that at least a part of them, the digital versions of them, gets to live on the digital world of the Ark. I'm sorry you feel that way, Simon. I'm proud of what we did. We made sure that something of the hundreds of thousands of years of human history survived, that something lives on. Then, after the credits are done, you wake up and are reborn as Simon in the Ark. You walk through the grassy fields and hear the sounds of wind, water, and birds around you. You finally meet Catherine in the digital world as well. The game asks you if you are happy with yourself or if you would rather be real. You can answer this however you want, but that poor version of Simon is still there on the ocean, alone, forever. Oh, fuck this! Fuck! Fuck this! Fuck you! Fuck you, Catherine! You lied! And I believed in you! I trusted you! You said we're getting on the fucking Ark! We are on the Ark, you idiot! I didn't lie! I can't be responsible for your goddamn ignorance! You fucking fuck! Catherine? Please don't leave me alone. Catherine? Catherine? So that was our experience with the game, but we want to know what your experience with this game was. Let us know in the comments below, and if you want to see our previous video, check here.